This is the craziest graphics card that I've ever seen. The amount of work that has gone into making this thing run as cool as possible is pretty neat. And it's called the 4090 Matrix from Asus. And take a look at this thing. It looks absolutely wild. And you can think of it as like the most overkill RTX 4090 that you can buy. First of all, it is completely liquid cooled. So take a look at this massive thing that's attached to it. So if you're interested in the benefits of liquid cooling and you know, those lower noise levels, but you're not someone who wants to buy a separate water block and mess around with like cutting up the thermal pads and installing all of the fittings, then these out of the box solutions are actually pretty good. However, they are also nothing new. In fact, I have even reviewed one previously, which is this one right here, the Supreme Liquid X from MSI. This one however uses a smaller radiator it's a 240 versus the 360 on the matrix and it also has an additional fan to cool the power circuitry so technically this is a hybrid card versus the full coverage water block solution that's on the matrix but again we've seen that before too the water force from gigabyte for example i haven't reviewed that one but that's also a full cover block with a 360 mil rad although the one on the matrix is about 10 millimeters thicker but there's something else even more interesting on the asus matrix but to show you that i need to open this thing up the teardown is pretty involved honestly i wouldn't recommend it and it's not something that you need to do there are a bunch of little screws in really weird places there are lots of little cables and there are some tube clamps as well eventually we get to the water block and the cold plate which look like this so full coverage copper block for the gpu memory power stages and the capacitors then with some additional leverage, we can lift this off to find the GPU and the liquid metal. This is one of the biggest features of the matrix compared to regular thermal paste, which has a thermal conductivity of five to 10 watts per meter Kelvin, liquid metal can do seven to 10 times that. And that boost in thermal transfer, I'd imagine is pretty effective when applied to a 400 watt plus GPU. There's only one problem though. Liquid metal is electrically conductive. One little sprinkle of this stuff over your PC CB, and you're looking at some permanent damage to your entire card. So ASUS has designed a neat little guard surrounding the GPU die to prevent that from ever happening. So I guess the last difference versus other graphics cards is the look. And I mean, this is going to be a bit subjective, but like, come on, this thing looks truly epic. I mean, it's so different from every other cooler or water block that I've seen. You've got this dark acrylic, which covers the pump and the tubing, just giving you a slight hint of what's on the inside. And then you've got this really nice, squared off metal frame. The whole thing has this really clean but very serious look to it. But yeah, props to whoever designed this thing because it looks absolutely mental. You've got some decent length tubes as well to that 360 mil radiator, so mounting shouldn't be an issue. Each 120 mil fan, by the way, is daisy chained too, so there's no visible cables. They all connect via pins and the radiator comes in at 40 mils in thickness. So I guess let's fire this thing up and see what all of those parts actually amount to. All testing here, by the way, was completed before disassembling and taking anything apart. The room temperature as well was controlled at 22 degrees C, and I've tested it back to back here with the Founders Edition and the Supreme Liquid X from MSI. And after running Cyberpunk at 4K for 35 minutes, here's what we get. The air-cooled FE settles in at 67 degrees. We see a 10 degree drop by moving up to the 240 mil liquid cooler from MSI, and then a further five from the Matrix. So yeah, 4090 running at low 50s is pretty damn impressive. We also see a seven degree cooler hotspot versus MSI, possibly thanks to that liquid metal. And the memory temps also see a slight benefit from that larger radiator, but it's not much. All of this though, while actually having the fastest boost clock out of the three, this thing runs at almost 2,900 megahertz out of the box. So complete default settings here. Surprisingly, the matrix doesn't pull as much power as you'd think. I mean, I was expecting it to pull close to 500 watts out of the box just by the look of it, but seems relatively under control. Now, since we have different fan speeds here, we of course have different noise levels as well. So here's what each of the cards sound like at complete stock settings, along with a sound pressure reading as well. Well. 
But what is the thermal performance like with all of the cards at the exact same noise levels? So essentially we're talking about a noise normalized thermal test. And what I've done here is just raise the fan speed of both the MSI and the ASUS card to match the 40.5 dBA reading on the NVIDIA FE. And basically this resulted in a further one to two degree improvement on both the MSI and the ASUS. So what this means is that the ASUS matrix, if you run it at the same noise level as the Founders Edition, it can run about 17 degrees cooler, which is is insane and that's with a 120 megahertz faster boost clock now one thing i would have loved to see on the asus matrix would be some enhanced overclocking potential you know this thing is basically just like every other 4090 in terms of overclocking it's good for about three gigahertz flat and that's it because you can't really ramp up the voltage like you could with previous generations that's about as far as you can push it now i do think it kind of makes sense for most cards out there you don't want too many people pushing like 1.1 and 1.2 volts on a 4090 and exceeding like 600 watts power that would be absolutely mental but i think for this card here i definitely would have appreciated a little bit more flexibility the factory overclock is nice you know 120 megahertz makes it basically the fastest 4090 out there it's good for a few more frames when it comes to gaming but the whole point of this card i guess is the enhanced cooling and that just super unique look you know, it's pretty consistent with the rest of their Matrix GPU lineup. It's very different, it's overkill, and it feels like more of an engineer's passion project rather than a card that they plan on selling in huge numbers. But of course, it is still gonna be extremely expensive. So I will leave a link down below for those of you who are interested. Otherwise, hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one.